What can we expect from the fall? I can't imagine it's going to be this smooth for the next four months. No, it's not. I mean, at the beginning of the year, we said our theme for the entire year was going to be this tug of war uh, between tailwinds and headwinds and lots of volatility. I think the second half of this year is going to bring the exact same thing. I mean, you've got this support in the market a little bit. Over the last week, obviously, we had some buybacks going on. We had the CPI report that people kind of thought was going to be a, a pivot for the Fed. I I'm kind of the party pooper in that situation. I don't believe that at all. I don't think we're going to see a Fed pivot. But yet you've got rising interest rates. You've got fears of recession, especially in Europe. Um, you've got earnings valuations starting to come down for the second half of the year. So we had this summer rally, and that's great. I just don't think it is going to be sustainable. I think we can expect continued volatility going forward. Yeah, and again, I don't want to take anything away from our excellent coverage of the Fed, and the Fed matters a lot. But I am a little confused at, about sort of this market obsession about whether or not they raise 50 or 75 at the next meeting or two, does a, does a one quarter of 1% more or less matter to your clients that much? If it does, please tell me, Sullivan, you're wrong. But 25 basis points, does that, we know they're raising. Whether it's by X or by X minus Y or whatever, I'm not sure matters. No, you're exactly right. It doesn't matter at all. And so this debate really should be more along, where do we see the terminal rate? You have Bullard saying it should be, what, 375, 4%. Um, you have some other members that are getting a little more hawkish in where that terminal rate needs to be. So let's look out a little bit. Let's look at Euro dollar futures it, for March of 23. Those are up 50 basis points in the last few weeks. You've got the two year after CPI came down to a 307, it's back up to three and a quarter. We've got the 10 year going. Yeah. Look at German yields today, they're higher. So I think, yes, the trend is higher, whether it's 50 or 75 is not important. We know they're not going to take their foot off the gas at this point in time. Yeah, inflation, food prices, by the way, back on the rise, electricity costs on the rise, health care. I know you got a daughter in college. I'm not going to tell you about those bills. All right, you talked about quality. Well, quality is in the eye of the stockholder, Victoria Fernandez. So where do you guys at Crossmark see quality? I'm doing air quotes right now. So quality for us really comes down to the balance sheet. We want to see quality of earnings. We want to see quality of cash flow. We want to see quality of the management of the corporation. So when we look at those, it doesn't mean that you're looking at a certain sector. It just means within each sector, where are you finding the quality? So for us, um, we own Coca-Cola. We like the staple sector. That's a quality name there. We like insurance um, and healthcare. So like Cigna is a name we like. And you know we've liked financials all year long. We continue to. And when you focus on quality there, you're looking at a name like Visa. So I think it, we're not saying go all in on growth or value or be all risk on or risk off. We're saying find those pockets where you like to be in the market and then focus on the quality of the companies within. It's really a stock picker's market at this point.